Welcome to the latest episode of Bay Area Transit Secrets, where today I'm going to be taking you through San Jose's History Park. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. So History Park is located at 653 Felon Avenue in San Jose, and it's a very nice park that has a lot of historical information about San Jose, and it's basically a large-scale model of how life was many, many years ago. So behind me here is um, the Rod Deardon Sr. trolley barn. Now this is the man that San Jose Deardon was named after. Inside the barn, I don't know how well you can see, they have all sorts of old trolleys that would operate, assuming that it wasn't, you know, a full pandemic and everything. So behind me here is what's called a wigwag signal. This is a very, um, a very old style of railroad crossing before the normal gates and lights were invented. When a train comes, that uh, the dongle thing or the wigwag would go back and forth and back and forth using a, magne a magnetic technology, which is why it is called the magnetic signal. Now wigwags are very hard to find these days, and um, they're commonly found on rail lines with very low usage, as they certainly leave a lot to de a lot to be desired in the safety aspect. Coming up on this next exhibit, we have a steam traction engine is very cool. People who know Trevor from uh, Thomas the Tank Engine will know what I'm talking about. This is, the mo this is the precursor to what modern tractors are, and it worked in the same way as a steam engine would, with a boiler that powered a series of gears that powers the wheels that allow the tractor to run. Now, History Park is full of great exhibits from all time eras. For example, here's a gas station from what appears to be the 1950s. And here is an exhibit to the great Dr. Warburton, one of Santa Clara County's first, um, first physicians. And a dentist's office from the days when Novocaine was just regular cocaine. So the tracks here are for the trolley service that normally runs when the spiky air can't kill you. Sadly, it's deserted. Jose 啊,很慘,今天沒有開,因為今天不是星期日 In addition to the glorious Chinese American History Museum, there's also a Portuguese museum here. However, since I don't speak Portuguese, I'm gonna stick to English for this one. In addition to the Chinese American Museum and the Portuguese Historical Museum, History Park also has a museum dedicated to Vietnam. Now this museum is housed in a rather nice building, and it has all sorts of exhibits about um, the Vietnam War and the sacrifices that it entailed, as well as just general, you know, Vietnamese history. It's also dedicated to the boat people, so there's a nice nod in the front of the museum to that too. Walking through History Park brings you to many old houses like this one, which apparently belonged to a David Umbarger, who was a 49er who came in the gold rush. I feel like it's an unwritten rule for historical parks to always have like at least one firehouse. And look what's behind me! It's the OG post office. Nice little building. Inside this little shed, there's a little 
train that I can move. <laughs> it's chained though, so there's that. So the train back here would have been used for stuff like transporting fruit and goods across the orchards as an easy way to transport things without, you know, using your hands. And I guess here's an extra section of track. So at the end of the trolley track, there is what's called the electric light tower, which is a large wire structure that used to sit over, I believe it was Main Street in Santa Clara, and trolleys would run underneath it just like they do, well, not today, but you know when the train's running. As you can see, it is big. So another cool feature of the electric light tower is that it had 24,000 candle power of six arc lights. So like this thing is all Christmas lights, you know, that sort of thing. And it was the inspir it was an inspiration for the designer of the Eiffel Tower, which was built eight years later. So, I'm standing with what is arguably History Park's gem, their jewel of the collection. Southern, former Southern Pacific Steam Locomotive number 1215, which is of the 060 wheel design. And you know who else was of the 060 wheel design? So, 060 means that it has zero front wheels. It has one, two, three driving wheels on each side and it has zero trailing wheels, making it a zero, six, zero. Now this is what we refer to as a chonky boy. Now a little tidbit that I always thought was a fun fact. These divots here on either side of the fender, or bumper I guess, these are designed so that when this train was in yard operation and it needed to sort cars, it could do so without switching tracks. So let's say there's a freight car on this track, which doesn't exist, and the locomotive is on this track, which does exist. So what would happen is the freight car would also have these divots, and a stick would connect the two divots in a diagonal fashion, so that the steam loco so that the locomotive could push the push the car forward without having to do the time-consuming process of switching tracks. And obviously OSHA had several words with that, and that practice is now abandoned. So next to the train, there's some trolley tracks here. These continue on to the Happy Hollow Park, which is further that way. Even before the pandemic stopped all the trolley services this park operates, those tracks looked, well, not very well used, so sad. But I would love to see a trolley trundling down the sidewalk heading towards Happy Hollow. If you would like to visit this awesome park one day, you can. It's at 653 Felon Road, and it'll be waiting for you. Wear a mask.